Hello and welcome to the first ever edition of the Timeform Awards, the racing awards from the leading authority on racehorse performance since 1948. And who better to join us in the studio than Timeform flat editor David Johnson. David, first of all, just tell us a bit more about these awards and how they've come about. Yes, yeah, so as you mentioned, Timeform have been uh, awarding ratings to racehorses for a very long time now, 1948 they first came about, so that's 75 years. And um, traditionally we used to do the annuals, which were a great product, but um, they just weren't, um, I guess, suitable for the way that people like to enjoy and really uh, take in their racing in the way that they used to, you know, the world is changing, the way that people... Uh, um, you know, experience these kind of things changes as well. So we've come up with uh, these awards that uh, look at all the best horses in various categories and talking about them in these kind of videos. And, uh, you know, there's going to be uh, awards handed out to, to the winners in each uh, category. So, yeah, hopefully people will enjoy looking back on what was a pretty stellar year for racehorses in 2023. Right then, let's get stuck in. And first up is the leading two-year-old of 2023 award. And David, the accolade goes to City of Troy. Indeed it does, yeah. City of Troy uh, rated 125p, which uh, is pretty high. Um, I think uh, you know there's only the likes of Pina Tubo uh, in recent years been rated higher than that. And uh, I think one of the most exciting things about City of Troy is it's not just what he's done as a two-year-old, but hopefully what he can go and do as a three-year-old. Uh, you know, think back to what he did on his debut. He looked really impressive. It was backed up by a really good closing sectional. And then the next time out, I think he was up to in class, went to the superlative stakes. And uh, this was the day that he really did announce himself as being potentially top class. Uh, you know, we cut to the real key point point of the race in this uh, video footage and just the way that he opens up in the closing stages puts a lot of distance between himself and his rivals in very little time and um, you know just again this wasn't just a case of it looking impressive it was very much backed up by the clock and uh, you know we thought he was group one material there we had to wait a little while to see him at that level he didn't run in the national stakes you know henry longfellow took his place but he was worth the wait with what we did see in the dewhurst i think he won that by three and a half lengths and you know like i say what is so exciting is he set a real good platform for potentially going on and achieving really good things as a three-year-old in 2024. And after his Dewhurst win, the F word was branded around quite a bit. And how does he compare to Frankel at this stage of their careers? Yeah, well, Frankel is always uh, a little bit off the scale compared to the majority of horses. Uh, you know, he was obviously the greatest horse that Timeform have ever rated. And even as a two-year-old, he'd announced himself very early on. His Timeform rating as a two-year-old was 133p. So City of Troy does have ground to make up there. But, you know, like I say, Judging horses against Frankel isn't really fair, but judging him against, you know, some of Aidan O'Brien's other best horses, you know, um, I think Air Force Blue might be his best ever two-year-old on 126, so he's already there, but potentially it wouldn't at all surprise me to see him go and run ratings in the, the mid to high 130s as a three-year-old, and I think Hawkwing is Aidan O'Brien's best ever horse at the moment with a rating of 136. And this is what's so good about City of Troy. He's got that style to go and win by wide margins. You know, we've seen there in the superlative, the Dewhurst again. And, you know, please, he gets to the Guineas fit and well. And if he's ridden in similar fashion, you know, we could see a really big effort from him in races like that. And next up on the list in number two is a stable mate of City of Troy and Henry Longfellow. Indeed, yeah, and that 120p rating that he has briefly made him the clubhouse leader and the highest rated two-year-old uh, after that um, national stakes. And I think it was a case, obviously, there he'd got the group one. That was job done for him. And, you know, he's probably not quite as spectacular as City of Troy and probably doesn't have quite the potential, but... He's going to ensure that City of Troy doesn't completely have his own way in a guineas. You know, we know that Aidan O'Brien likes to target that race first time out. He's certainly not shy of running his best horses against each other in a race like that. So uh, hopefully we will see him run there and give City of Troy a race and give him that chance to really elevate his race into a high level. And it's not quite an Irish domination in this category. We've got Van Deek in third. Yeah, he's a different type to the other two, obviously a sprinter through and through. And uh, I guess the question for him to answer next year is to prove that he's not a two-year-old through and through. But what he's done in that first season was really impressive. 
I think he's won the two group ones. He won the pre Mornay, then came and backed it up, um, you know, in good style in the middle park. And uh, he's a ho- the kind of horse for what that Commonwealth Cup is, is, you know, it was brought in for because he's got not a great, a deal of stamina in his pedigree he doesn't look like he'd be staying a mile so I think connections have already said that um, they're going to stick to him uh, at six furlongs and uh, he does look like a real Commonwealth Cup sprint type uh, at this stage so congratulations the city of Troy time forms champion two-year-old of 2023 and who knows what he can go on to achieve next year okay so next up is leading male three-year-old and we go to Japan for this one and it's Equinox who takes this title Yeah, I don't think it's going to come as a surprise to too many people who've been watching Equinox and most recently, obviously, in that imperious um, Japan Cup. He was so, so good there, wasn't he? And uh, I guess it's not a case of just that one-off performance, really, with him. You know, we've seen all season um, how good he can be. You know, he's got a deep um, CV of these top-class performances time and time again. And he he sort of really... uh, threw himself into the uh, the mix towards a European audience with that win out in Dubai, didn't he? Uh, that race that ties in so well with some of the best European horses that we've seen and we know how well that race worked out. Westover, obviously, in second. The third horse came out and won a Group 1, I think, um, in Germany. And Mostadaf, OK, Mostadaf probably doesn't stay a mile and a half ridden as he was in that kind of company, but we know what a top-class horse he is as well. So, uh, yeah, very much the case of Equinox leading the way. A rating of 136. That's almost as high as what Baid was last year. And those two, uh, we're going back to that F word again, the two best horses that we've seen since Frankel. And the slightly underwhelming thing with Equinox, and I'm, I am being harsh because, um, you know, he's such a good horse, is that... I, I'm convinced that we would have seen him run to a higher level still if he stayed around next year. So I completely understand the reasons for why he's gone to stud and the need, you know, to see um, the impact that he can have on the breed as a stallion. But um, Equinox 136, it wouldn't have surprised me if we s- would have been sat here in 12 months' time talking about Equinox nearly 140, perhaps. So uh, Equinox, the leading male over a three-year-old and upwards this year, but uh, a little bit a case of maybe we could have seen even more on a different day. And second and third in this category goes to Ace Impact and Westover, first and second in the arc. Indeed, yeah, Ace Impact is the the kind of horse that um, when you saw what he did in the arc, you're a little bit surprised that he's not uh, winning a category like this. And similar to Equinox, he spent the whole season unbeaten. And similarly, he retires with us wanting to see a little bit more almost. And uh, again, you can see the importance of him going back to stud. I think he's the first three-year-old, uh, French trained three-year-old to win the arc since the French derby was reduced in distance. You know, French three-year-olds um, have really struggled of late to, in that race when you consider how they used to dominate it. And Ace Impact now retires to stud and, you know, he was a top class racehorse. That's what that rating of 133 uh, proves. So, leading male 2023 goes to Japanese superstar Equinox. The next category is leading female, and that accolade goes to the John and Thady Gosden trained Emily Upjohn. Yeah, um, almost disappointing that she only managed to make it to the track uh, three times this year, but uh, when she did, certainly on two of those occasions, she showed really how good she could be. First time up we saw her was obviously the Coronation Cup. Now, it was only a small field. There was only the five runners. But the turn of foot that she unleashed this day really did mark her out as, um, as we say, the leading uh, female older horse, basically. And, uh, you know, the way she quickens clear, she wins ultimately only by a length and three quarters. But as you can see, you know, that sort of... Uh, the race was done and dusted by the time that Westover, no less, is, is closing back up on her. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like this was a one-off by any means. You know, she looked so good on occasions as a three-year-old. And then she backed it up when she ran Paddington to um, about half a length, I think it was, in the Eclipse. Now, Paddington, at the end of the season, wasn't quite the force he was when um, Emily Upjohn was taking him on at his very best. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Emily Upjohn... Again, it's it's another one of those stories where we're thinking what might have been if the rest of the season had gone a little bit better. She disappointed in the King George for the second year on the bounce. And then, unfortunately, we didn't see her again. 
whether connections decide to bring her back as a five-year-old I don't know yet uh, but um, you know hopefully they will because she's shown more than enough to suggest that races like the Coronation Cup again it's a kind of um, campaign I think uh, there's not that many top class horses staying in training next year so connections will hopefully be tempted to bring her back and John and Thirdy Gosden again show showcasing their talents with the mares with Inspiral taking second yes and speaking uh, about horses being kept in training I think she is coming back as a five-year-old isn't she and that really impressive Breeders Cup win it, it does make you feel that there is unfinished business with her over a mile and a quarter um, you know she's obviously got the speed for a mile she's won good races at that trip think back to uh, the race that she won in France I think it was a pre lac uh, pre Jacques uh, Le Marois where she beat Big Rock we think what he did at the end of the season now it might be obviously the case that he is a better horse on softer ground but you know she's still gone and put him to the sword and then like I say she looks so good out at the Breeders Cup and uh, a mile mile and a quarter there's lots of good races to be won with her next year and two Japanese mares share the spoils in third in through seven seas and Liberty Island yeah exactly and uh, you know uh, we saw a little bit of those uh, the form ties in obviously um, Liberty Island she ties in with Equinox uh, finishing place behind him in the Japan Cup and through seven seas she was uh, the one that turned up in the arc this year instead of Equinox and uh, ran a thoroughly um, quality race and uh, again there's something there about what might have been we talk about Equinox Japan in the the Prix de Lac de Triomphe you know it turned up good quick ground there this year didn't it and uh, maybe uh, connections will wonder if they're still desperate to win that uh, arc aren't they the Japanese uh, maybe this year is the year that it got away from them yeah so congratulations to connections of Emily Upjohn who is crowned champion female of 2023 so the next category is champion of the rest of the world and that accolade yet again goes to Japanese superstar Equinox. Yeah it's like a stop as if you've heard of this before and uh, Equinox is unsurprisingly uh, very much uh, dominating and uh, he's, a, he's champion of the rest of the world and uh, you know that sort of sums up in the way that he's taken his form around the globe almost. Obviously he's got those performances at home most recently the really impressive Japan Cup but we also remember how good he was with uh, what he did um, obviously in Dubai and that one through six rating that we've got of him you can see uh, how he compares to some of the best Japanese horses that have been around uh, through the years um, he's at least as good as what Al Condor Passa was who finished second uh, in the art back in 1999 and even better than Deep Impact who came over with a huge reputation when he ran in the arc and he he didn't really give his run in that day, I don't think, behind Rail Link. We didn't see the best of Deep, in deep Impact in that arc. But, um, yeah, what we do see with this graphic is that Equinox, um, you know, he's as good as what uh, Japan has produced. And it shows that uh, the way that they develop their bloodlines in a real patient way, they prioritise middle distances. And, it, you know, it's not a surprise that, uh, OK, there is a sprinter on there in uh, Lord Kanaloa. But, um, you know, it's middle distance horses are dominating the one, two, three. And uh, you suspect that the way that the breeding over there does uh, really promote stamina, that that's going to continue for, for a long while to come. And next up on this list is Golden 60, Hong Kong's poster boy, who looked as good as ever at the age of eight in the Hong Kong Mile. Yeah, and that's the real notable thing about it, is what he's doing as an eight-year-old. Um, you know, obviously he's a gelding, so, uh, you know, there's not really uh, the temptation to retire him when he's able to do what he did. And uh, that Hong Kong Mile success, I think it was the third time that he's won the race. Um, I think he's tied the record there with, uh, there's one other horse, I think that's won three, three of those. And, uh, yeah, a rating of 129. Um, is, uh, is, is bang up there with uh, some of the best horses in the world obviously uh, with the exception of uh, the mighty Equinox. And third goes to the dirt star from the US Cody's Wish. Yeah Cody's Wish um, I think he's uh, the best dirt horse that we've seen this year and obviously everyone knows a lot about Cody's Wish and the story that goes alongside him but um, as a racehorse as well he's, he's very notable and uh, his rating of 129 that was good enough to see him win back-to-back -back Breeders' Cup Dirt Miles and uh, um, I don't know what the, the plan with him is whether he's going to stay in training but uh, I, I mean he's, he's obviously raced only up to a mile but uh, 
there's such a good program, a valuable program for these dirt horses, isn't there? Like it's in uh, Saudi, obviously uh, Dubai World Cup. So uh, I wonder if um, that might be uh, something they'd be tempted with him as well. But um, yeah, 129 for Cody's Wish makes him the best dirt horse in the world in 2023. So congratulations to Equinox, champion of the rest of the world and one of the very best horses Japan has ever produced. Next up is the champion of Europe and that accolade goes to the brilliant arc winner Ace Impact. Exactly, he was a brilliant arc winner, wasn't he? Um, and he's a horse that he sort of came out of nowhere. We were just sort of discussing beforehand how um, I think Rail Link was the, the last horse before him to win an arc that wasn't raced as a two-year-old, and he just sort of gradually, you know, went through the grades. And the real time that he announced himself was that French Derby, wasn't he? I think he was a nine-to-one chance to win that. And uh, think back, what a in hindsight, what a good bet that looks now. Um, uh, you know, it was so impressive there. And uh, that was the first time uh, in good company that we really saw him unleash that turn of foot that became his trademark, wasn't it? And uh, I guess uh, the way that he was campaigned, you saw how important it was for them to win the arc with him. You know, um, he's a very similar type to uh, the likes of Almanzor, who, uh, you know, had been so good for the same trainer a few years back. And they went the mile and a quarter route with him. But um, obviously... The stamina was there, they were confident and stepping up to a mile and a half, he looked even better, didn't he, in, in the Arc de Triomphe. And uh, we, we said briefly when we were talking about him earlier that uh, he left us wanting more and that, that's, that's the way we are with him. You know, he, he retires to stud, but um, what a four-year-old I think he would have made if he'd have stayed in training. And second in this category, it almost sums up his season really, he was second to Equinox in Maidan. Second to Emily Upjohn in the Coronation Cup, second to Ace Impact in the Arc. It's Westover who takes second in this category as well. It is, yeah, and um, it's a little bit unfair on him because he danced every dance, didn't he? And uh, like you say there, you know, his form ties in with so many of these good horses. And uh, he turned up and gave his running on virtually every occasion. And fortunately, he did win his Group 1, didn't he? He won the... Um, Grand Prix de saint Cloud, I think it was. Um, I mean, it wasn't a strong one by, by any stretch of the imagination, but he did get the one that he deserved. And, uh, you know, I think all credit as well to Rafe Beckett with how he turned this horse round. If you remember, at the, uh, in the, um, the King George as a three-year-old, he lost that race before the start. He looked like he might potentially go the wrong way, but um, Rafe Beckett did such a good job getting him back getting him to channel that energy in the correct manner. And uh, that's why he, he achieved so much as he did. And I think he would have stayed in training as a five-year-old if he hadn't got injured in the arc. So uh, that's a, a bit of a shame because, uh, you know, there could have been more good races to be, to be won with him. Yeah. And the King, the King George winner, Hookham, takes third. Yeah, and he's you know, sort of shows uh, the benefits of being patient and, giving horses time to really flourish. And I think it was a seven-year-old, or was he six, six or seven this year? Um, you know, he won that Coronation Cup, didn't he, last year, and suffered that injury, and it looked like he might um, end up retiring to stud. And let's be honest, if his brother Baid hadn't have come along, he may well have retired to stud, but um, bringing him back for that extra season, it's definitely paid dividends. He looked so good in the Brigadier Gerard, And then that... Uh, real impressive success in, in the King George. You know, it's uh, attracted a fair bit of attention for the ride that he got and uh, the implications uh, with regarding the use of the whip and Jim Crowley and all that that uh, came with it. But um, it shouldn't disguise the fact that what a top class racehorse who can developed into. So uh, yeah, he's well worth his position on this, this list. So congratulations to Connections of Ace Impact, brilliant arc winner and champion of Europe 2023. So, finally, it's time for the big one, Horse of the Year 2023, and that goes to Japanese superstar Equinox. Yeah, there's a phrase in horse racing, isn't there, about related contingencies, so uh, it's no big surprise that the Horse of the Year is one that we've already discussed a fair bit, and Equinox, I don't think anybody would um, be disputing the fact that he deserves it, you know, in terms of ratings, he's the highest rated in terms of performances visually they're so good you know we're looking here at the Shima Classic uh, mentioned earlier how this is how he really announced himself to a European audience and think of the horses that he's running away from here that's Mostadaf in blue in second uh, group one winner in third in the yellow silk so Westover staying on strongly down the outside you know we know what he's done uh, in top company and you know 
Equinox mentioned that you know we, we would have liked to have seen him stay in training, but in terms of what he did in 2023, it marked him down as an all-time great and uh, certainly one that is fully deserving of the accolade of 2023 time form Horse of the Year. And second on this list is the champion of Europe, it's Impact. Yeah, exactly. And in so many years, what he achieved would have been enough to have been Horse of the Year. You know, we mentioned before, he's got that unbeaten season. He's an impressive winner of one of the most prestigious races. I think the Prix de l'Arc is sort of bang up there in terms of ratings, in terms of being one of the best races all season. And, um, you know, Ace Impact, what else can you say about him? He's we would have liked to have seen him stay in training, but again, what he did this year, nobody can really, really knock, I don't think. And one horse who we will see next year, quite surprisingly actually, is the horse who comes third on this list, and that's August Rodin. Yeah, exactly. August Rodin, who, uh, you know, his season started out uh, so dismally, didn't it, in the 2000 Guineas, and Aidan O'Brien doing such a good job to get him back in the derby, and then... You know, it was uh, the peaks and troughs, wasn't it? Uh, everyone wondered whether we'd see him again after the uh, the King George, where it all went so wrong. But he ended the season very much on a high. And uh, like you say, the fact that he stays in training as a four-year-old is a really exciting prospect because mentioned that the likes of Westover retiring, the likes of Mosterdaff not being around, there, there is a gap at the top level for a horse like August Rodin to potentially dominate, so certainly until the three-year-olds come on the scene and maybe somewhere we'll see August Rodin against City of Troy and they're the kind of matchups that uh, you know we really dream of as, as racing fans. Yeah, so lots to look forward next year with August Rodin and a big congratulations to Equinox who is Time Farm's Horse of the Year 2023. So that's the champion race horses of 2023 crowned by Time Farm. What do you think? Did you agree with the winners? If not, let us know who you thought of should have won in the comments. And thanks for watching.